This is a video reading excerpt from Psycho-Cybernetics, written by Maxwell Maltz. Chapter 4, Part 4. You can cure your inferiority complex. At least 95% of the people have their lives blighted by feelings of inferiority to some extent, and to millions this same feeling of inferiority is a serious handicap to success and happiness. In one sense of the word, every person on the face of the earth is inferior to some other person or persons. I know that I cannot lift as much weight as Paul Anderson, throw a 16-pound shot put as far as Perry O'Brien, or dance as well as Arthur Murray. I know this, but it does not induce feelings of inferiority within me and delight my life, simply because I do not compare myself unfavor unfavorably with them and feel that I am no good merely because I cannot do certain things as skillfully or as well as they. I also know that in certain areas every person I meet, from the newsboy on the corner to the president of the bank, is superior to me in certain respects. But neither can any of these people repair a scarred face, or do any number of other things as well as I, and I am sure they do not feel inferior because of it. Feelings of inferiority, feelings of inferiority originate not so much from facts or experiences but from our conclusions regarding facts and our evaluation of experiences. For example, the fact that I am an inferior weightlifter and an inferior dancer. This does not, however, make me an inferior person. Paul Anderson's and Arthur Murray's inability to perform surgery makes them inferior surgeons, but not inferior persons. It all depends upon what and whose norms we measure ourselves by. It is not knowledge of actual inferiority and skill or knowledge which gives us an inferiority complex and interferes with our living. It is the feeling of inferiority that does this. And this feeling of, inferior, of inferiority comes about for just one reason. We judge ourselves and measure ourselves, not against our own norm or par, but against some other individual's norm. When we do this, we always, without exception, come out second best but because we think and believe and assume that we should measure up to some other person's norm, we feel miserable and second-rate, and conclude that there's something wrong with us. The next logical conclusion is in this cockeyed reasoning process is to conclude that we are not worthy, that we do not deserve success and happiness, that we would be out of place for, it would be out of place for us to fully express our own abilities and talents, whatever they may be without apology or without feeling guilty about it. All this comes about because we have allowed ourselves to be hypnotized by the entirely erroneous idea that I should be like so-and-so, or I should be like everyone, everybody else. The fallacy of the second idea can be readily seen through, if analyzed, for in truth there are no fixed standards common to everybody else. Everybody else is composed of individuals, no two of whom are alike. A person with an inferiority complex invariably compounds the error by striving for superiority, whose feelings spring from the false premise that he is inferior. From this false premise, a good whole structure of logical thought and feeling is built. If he feels bad because he is inferior, the cure is to make himself as good as everybody else, and the way to really feel good is to make himself superior. This striving for superiority gets him into more trouble, causes more frustration, and sometimes brings about a neurosis which where none existed before. He becomes more miserable than ever, and the harder he tries, the more miserable he becomes. Inferiority and superiority are reverse sides of the same coin. The cure lies in realizing that the coin itself is spurious. The truth about this about you is this. You are not inferior. You are not superior. You are simply you. You as a personality are not co in competition with any other personality simply because there is not another person on the face of the earth like you or in your particular class. You are an individual. You are unique. You are not like any other person and you can never become like any other person. You are not supposed to be like any other person and no other person is supposed to be like you. God did not create a standard person and in some way label that person by saying, this is it. 
He made every human being individual and unique, just as he made every snowflake individual and unique. God created short people and tall people, large people and small people, skinny people and fat people, black, yellow, and red, and white people. He has never indicated that any preference for any one size, shape, or color. Abraham Lincoln once said, God must have loved the common people, for he made so many of them. He was wrong. There is no common man, no standardized common pattern. He would have been near to the truth had he said, God must have loved uncommon people, for he made so many of them. An inferiority complex and its accompanying deterioration in performance can be made to order in this psychological laboratory. All you need to do is set up a norm or average, then convince your subject he does not measure up. A psychologist wanted to find out how feelings of inferiority affected the ability to solve problems. He gave his students a set of routine tests, but then he had solemnly announced that the average person could complete the test in about one-fifth the time it, actually, it would really take. When in the course of the test a bell would ring, indicating that the average time man's time is up, some of the brightest subjects became very jittery and incompetent indeed, thinking themselves to be morons. Stop measuring yourself against their standards. You are not them, and you can never measure up. Neither can they measure up to yours, nor should they. Once you see this simple, rather self-evident truth, accept it and believe it. Your feelings, your inferior feelings, will vanish. Dr. Norton L. Williams, psychiatrist, addressing a medical convention, said recently that modern man's anxiety and insecurity stem from a lack of self-realization and that inner, inner security can only be found in finding one, in oneself an individuality, uniqueness, and distinctiveness that is akin to the idea of being created in the image of God. He also said that self-realization is gained by a simple belief in one's uniqueness, own uniqueness as a human being, a sense of deep and wide awareness of all people and all things, and a feeling of constructive influencing of others through one's own personality.